Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. UK Privy Council squash vibes cartel murder case. Seven people arrested following brawl with Westmoreland police. And later in sports, Beach Soccer Jamaica loses appeal for injunction reinstatement. Thank you for joining us. I'm Shamela Pullen. Here are the details. The UK Privy Council has squashed the murder conviction of entertainer Vibes Cartel and his three co-convicts. The Court of Appeal will now have to make a determination if the men should be granted a retrial. The final Court of Appeal gave the instructions after overturning the men's 2014 murder convictions. The ruling was made a short while ago. The board is very mindful of the serious consequences which may flow from having to discharge a jury shortly before the end of a long and complex criminal trial. It is also very conscious of the danger of deliberate attempts to derail criminal trials by engineering situations in which it is necessary to discharge the jury. In England and Wales, there is legislation which allows a judge in certain situations to discharge a jury because of jury tampering and to continue the trial by judge alone. There is no such legislation in Jamaica. It follows that there will be occasions where, as in this case, a court will have no alternative but to discharge a jury and end the trial in order to protect the integrity of the system of trial by jury. In view of its conclusion on the issue of juror misconduct, the board holds that it is not necessary to express a concluded view on the other two grounds of appeal. For these reasons, the appellant's appeals should be allowed. The court is now adjourned. Adija Palmer, Sean Campbell, Kahira Jones and Andre St. John were convicted on March 13, 2014 for the murder of Clive Lizard Williams. They were all sentenced to life in prison. And before the ruling, Senior Attorney Bert Samuels had this to say on the matter. Based on the reaction of the judges where the arguments were proceeding, we are confident that they were very upset about the jury point that the judge allowed a juror who is allegedly trying to bribe the jury, allowed him to sit and continue to deliberate, that he sent them out 17 minutes to four after 64 days of trial. That was huge pressure on the jury. And the director of public prosecution infused herself in his chambers and encouraged the judge to keep the juror who was allegedly bribing and to render a verdict with the bad apple. So this is a day for us to see whether it is right for a prosecutor, the chief prosecutor, to encourage a judge to keep a juror who has been bribing the others. At least seven people have been arrested following a brawl with the Westmoreland police on Sunday. The incident was captured on video in Whitehall, Negril. It showed a group of police officers attempting to arrest a man. The police say nine charges have been laid against the main person, Andre Brown of Old Hope, Little London. These include four counts of assault, occasioning bodily harm, unlawful wounding and resisting arrest. The incident happened minutes after six Sunday morning after police went to the area about noise from a party. More reactions this afternoon following the appointment of a new police commissioner. Jamaicans for Justice Chairman John Clark and social anthropologist Dr. Herbert Gale were on TVJ's All Angles Wednesday. On Wednesday, National Security Minister Dr. Horace Chang announced that Deputy Commissioner Dr. Kevin Blake will assume the post of Commissioner on Tuesday, March 19. Since the news, local experts have been weighing in on the appointment. Social anthropologist Dr. Herbert Gale says the police force is more complicated now than before and Dr. Blake's credentials make him appear most fit for the job. This commissioner coming in uh, has an academic background uh, is more a balanced person, a little bit on the quantitative side, but clearly have a broad experience in technology, understanding where modern policing is. So uh, when his name was called this morning, a lot of people just text my phone and said, balance may be coming. So th that should tell you, and these are people from outside That's of Jamaica. 
most commissioners are given a three-year contract. So questions are again being raised whether this is too short for any tangible impact to be made. Dr. Gale says while it is, some objectives can still be achieved. So working with the young people, redeploying uh, people, making sure you have uh, you are expanding systems that help people who had no ontological security, which means sense of hope, keep providing them hope. And you can keep the boots on the ground and all the old-fashioned police in the pot, but make sure all the modern things that people know create change are in this pot. And even if nobody, uh, even if within the three years you don't get to achieve what you have, the next set of persons who come in are going to be calling your name all the time. And it's Chairman for Jamaicans for Justice John Clark says there are issues that the new commissioner will have to address. And with the new commissioner coming with a background in technology, more is expected to be done regarding police officers wearing body camera. For a long time, as a nation, I've been speaking about body-worn cameras. Mm -hmm. And I would hope that with this um, commissioner, who has a lot of experience in technology, that we will see a stage that where the protocols are developed, published, and more police officers are given body worn cameras. It, in fact, should be the exception that officers don't have it. Right. Because in many cases, when there are controversy in relation to how things actually happen, the body worn cameras can be a very good means to vindicate good officers and a very good means to ensure that the force can rid itself of officers who operate in a manner which does not befit the uniform that they're wearing. Kerry and Simpson, TVG. A client and family is appealing to the public for help after their relative went missing in West Maland. Amoy Harriet has the details. Around 6 a.m. on Sunday, 33-year-old Ricardo Saunders left his home in Longville Park, Clarendon to visit family friends in Negril, West Milan. This was his first time traveling to Negril. His relatives say shortly after 11 o'clock, he phoned his brother to let him know he arrived in the parish safely. That was the last time Giovanni Saunders heard from his brother. We get a call at 5 o'clock hours, save me from that. Nowhere to be found, None, no contact. Nothing like that. Ricardo did not make it to his friend's home. What happened after he arrived in Negril? His family is still searching for those answers. Your brother normally wander off? No, sir. No, sir. You have no mental problem, nothing like that. After filing a missing persons report, the police and his relatives launched a search party. Ricardo's car was found in close proximity to a beach in Negril. It was left open and the shirt he was wearing that morning was found in the vehicle. He also left home in black shorts and a pair of white slippers. His family also discovered that his WhatsApp was last active around 4 o'clock that afternoon. They are struggling to cope. Right now my father is devastated. Very, very, very much. We just want some help. We just want a bit of some assistance and some help. Please. Deputy Superintendent of Police at the Negril Police Station, Sean J. Mitchell, told our news center that up to Wednesday night, a team was still searching for Ricardo, but still, he's nowhere to be found. The family is appealing to anyone with information that may assist in locating their relative. They can contact us at... 2206686 and 5360074. Amoy Harriet, TVJ News. The Manchester police say they are targeting other players in the Predair Larceny operation in the parish. Karen Simpson tells us more. On Friday, the Manchester Police, along with public health inspectors and personnel from the Veterinary Services Division of the Ministry of Agriculture, carried out operations in the Porus, Christiana and Mandeville Markets, as well as slaughterhouses in Berry Vale, Christiana and Comfort, along with several undisclosed meat shops throughout the parish. Five persons were warned for prosecution for operating without food handler's permit. The police say from January 11 to 24, seven heads of cattle were butchered and four injured by thieves. The police say the operations are ongoing and are aimed at identifying those who purchase stolen animals and agricultural produce from predial thieves. Based on reports, Manchester was hit hard by predial thieves last year and early into the new year. Kerry and Simpson, TVJ News. It's time for a break. Stay with us for stories when we return.
Welcome back to the Midday News. Some St. Andrew residents are appealing to the authorities for rehabilitation work to be done on the road in their area. They say the deplorable condition is putting their lives and businesses at risk. Amoy Harriot reports. What would normally be a 20-minute drive along Waltham Park Road is now lasting up to an hour. According to one motorist, the road is transformed into a river during heavy rains. TVJ News understands that water often settles on the main road, leading to further deterioration and deepening of potholes. To make matters worse, residents say their neighbors frequently release water from their washing machines onto the roadway, which also contributes to its destruction. One resident says the reason for this issue is the way in which the roads were constructed. They build roads, so. Yeah, you can't you build it like so. When you run for the water, just run off and go in the sidewalk. A safety bill. The community members are also concerned about the safety of pedestrians as they say to avoid potholes, motorists are now driving on the sidewalks. Yes, when they're ready, the taxi man will come down, they start on the sidewalk. If, 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 if you're on the side, yeah, they come on the sidewalk. Said, yeah. If you're on the side, they come on the sidewalk. Said, yeah. All right, you see, don't get so. At the corner, don't get so. Half road, not the sidewalk. They so. A regular people get it down there, down there, so. Another major problem. Dust. Right now, it does all kill me, brother. I don't know. A doctor may have to go every minute. Right now, I can't do I tell you that. You know, easy. Out here. Come watch here. Every night, I watch me and watch her. Over the weekend, the National Works Agency started repair works on a section of the roadway. Now, the affected areas of Waltham Park falls within two constituencies, St. Andrew Southwestern and St. Andrew West Central, for which the members of Parliament are Angela Brown-Burke and Andrew Holness, respectively. The section of the road that was repaired last weekend falls under Mr. Holness's constituency. As for the part represented by Mrs. Brown-Burke, she says a meeting was held with the National National Water Commission to discuss repair works. That meeting, the conversation that we had then was that they were waiting on some pressure testing and some issues they were having to have those resolved so that once the roads were fixed, they would not need to dig them back up again. And we got a commitment that that will be done shortly. Now that the SPARC program is now supposed to be a reality as of April of this year or somewhere there, we are are expecting that it will be done at that time as well. It's now time for the Business Minute. Jamaica earned more money from the export of goods to the CARICOM region for the three quarters in last year. Statin says for the period January to October 2023, CARICOM exports were valued at 142.7 million US dollars. That's an increase of 24.7% when compared with the 114.5 million US dollars earned in the corresponding 2022 period. This was linked mainly to higher exports of mineral, fuel, and food. Earnings from the export of mineral fuels amounted to 51.6 million US dollars or 17.7% above the 43.8 million US dollars earned for January to October 2022. Export of food was valued at 41.6 million US dollars, an increase of 34%. Further afield, Adidas's Yeezy fiasco has helped push the German sports gear giant to a rare annual loss. In October 2022, Adidas broke off its partnership with Yeezy designer Kanye West after he made a string of anti-Semitic remarks. The fallout from the company's costly breakup with Kanye wasn't the only factor though. Adidas has also seen falling North American sales and a huge tax bill. The company posted a net loss of $63 million in its core business in 2023. Adidas is selling remaining Yeezy products already in stock, saying it will donate a significant amount to selected organizations working to combat discrimination and hate. And that's it for the Business Minute. I'm Karian Simpson. Time now for the top regional and international stories. In the region, the Office of the Attorney General in Suriname has requested a preliminary investigation into a potential corruption case against President Chan Santoki and two of his ministers. 
This follows reports that the government allegedly paid an estimated 7.5 million US dollars to Pan American Real Estate, a local company, using false documents. The issue first came to light when an anonymous whistleblower armed with various documents filed a criminal complaint with the Attorney General Office, but the president has denied the allegations. On the international scene, Russians will be heading to the polls on Friday as the presidential election begins and runs until Sunday. With only three other candidates on the ballot, analysts believe current President Vladimir Putin is most likely to secure a fifth term. Voting has already started in what Russia calls its new territories, including occupied parts of Ukraine where Russian forces are attempting to exert authority. And at least 16 SWAT team members were injured after an explosion at an FBI training facility in California on Wednesday. Reports are that the SWAT team and bomb squad from the Orange County Sheriff's Department were conducting a joint exercise when the explosion occurred. The events leading up to the explosion remain unclear, but authorities have confirmed that the device was part of the training. And those were the top regional and international stories. I'm Amoy Harriet. Thank you, Amoy. We head to a quick break. When we come back, we'll have your midday sports report with Spencer Darlington.